how do we work out the total distance travelled? Okay, how do we work out the total distance travelled? Now, our first approach was a fairly sort of pedestrian approach. We just looked, we, we had already worked out where this stationary point was. Okay, so all we need to do was work out the upward journey, the downward journey, and you add them together. You get this number, 23.96, when you put those pieces together. Okay, now do we have reason to trust that answer? Does, that, does it seem reasonable? Yes. Does it seem, is there any other part of the journey that we have missed? No, it's a very simple journey, right? So therefore, you should have a lot of trust in this answer. You know when you have an answer and I come over and I, and I say to you, how confident are you that that's the answer? You should be very confident that, that that's the answer, okay? You've already done all of this work to establish that the numbers are right. It is 12.48, sure enough, and that's what you'll get. Okay. And then I pose the question, how else could you do this? And some of you said to me, you can integrate with respect to time. That'll give you total change, accumulated change. That's what integration is about, right? If I work out from here to here, from naught to, and we worked out that that was about 3.13, okay? Um, we should get some something that should be equivalent. So you're working out this. Oops, sorry. An integral from naught to 3.13. And most of you integrated x with respect to time. You were interested in how displacement was changing over time. What you got was this number. Actually, sorry, help me remember it. It was 25, 26? 26.5 something, right? And you're like, it's in the right ballpark, so it passes the, the, the common sense test, right? But, but it's not the answer that we, we established before. And we just labored the point that we should have a lot of trust for this answer. So what is this? What is this? Now, I'm, I'm just going to let that, that um, answer, that question rather, settle in your head for a little while. Let me tell you what the problem was. There are two problems, okay? Firstly, if you want to know how displacement changes over time, you do not integrate displacement. You integrate velocity. Let me say that again. If you want to know how displacement changes over time, you need to evaluate displacement over time not the integral of displacement over time. So really what you should have worked out is from naught to 3.13 of velocity with respect to time. Okay, that's what you should really be working out. Okay, now here's the thing though. We know what the integral of velocity will be. It'll be this equation, right? Minus your constant because it's going to add and subtract. But I know what the values are at these points, right? When I do this um, equation here, Okay. Remember, I'm something. I'm something in time. This is x as a function of time. Okay. What is uh, what's the displacement at 3.13 seconds? I'm at the ground, right? It's zero. There's my upper bound, right? What's my displacement at time zero? Answer: one meter above the ground, right? So there's my lower bound. So the answer I get off this integral is negative one. But what does it mean? What does it signify? It signifies total displacement from time 0 to time 3.13. Can you see what that is? Have a look. Where did I start? I started here. Where did I end? I ended here. The total displacement, one meter downward. Because that's what the board did. Okay? So, we already worked out the first problem that what you needed to integrate was not x with respect to time. It's, it's velocity with respect to time. So there's your first problem. Your second problem, though, is that doesn't end up helping you working out the total distance traveled, right? Of course it doesn't help you because it's not a distance equation. It's a displacement equation. It only tells you how far you away you are, not how far you've traveled, right? Doesn't take into account you've gone up or down or whatever, right? If you wanted to do some kind of integration, I guess what you would do is you would integrate from naught to the stationary point. That'll give you a distance. Then you double it, and then you add one for that final leg of the journey. But that's kind of awkward, being that you already know what that number is, and you worked it out by much simpler methods than integration. Okay. So, or I should say, you've already done the integration to get to this equation, so you might as well not do it again. Just use that fact. Okay. So, in summary, if you're working out the total distance traveled, you should always appeal back to this kind of argument. 
I went this way, and then I went that way, and I add them up. That's the simplest way to do it. It's the most foolproof, right? If you resort to integration, a definite integral, right? You, you really run the risk of confusing yourself quite dramatically, right? Especially if you've already worked out all the numbers you require, okay? So be very cautious with these questions. It's a simple thing. Understanding the difference between displacement and distance.